We have Timu Toke here from Ready Player Me, who is joining us today. How are you doing today? Hey, hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well. Awesome. Timu Toke is the CEO of Ready Player Me. I'm going to put this up here on the screen. Tell us a little bit about Ready Player Me just in general. I know you get asked this all the time at the beginning here, but would love to just give uh, guests that are not familiar with your platform, maybe think from an end user perspective, um, what Ready Player Me is. You know, what we, see, what we see is that people spend a lot of time in virtual worlds and kind of the metaverse is happening. Um, and the metaverse is not a single place or a single world um, to a network of thousands of different places. Um, so it makes sense for end users uh, of the metaverse to have an avatar that they can create and they can travel across worlds. So it becomes kind of a consistent identity you can use across many different uh, virtual places. So that's what Ready Premi is for the, for the end users, um, a portable virtual avatar, basically. And how we achieve that interoperability is actually by being uh, developer focused. So uh, for developers, when you're building a new new game or new virtual worlds, uh, like you have to basically build a new outer system, invent a new outer system each time. Um, and that's, you know, very time consuming and it's not like um, easy. Um, so we take that pain away. Uh, we give developers an easy to integrate outer system um, and, and basically, you know, help them focus on their game. Uh, or like whatever metaverse virtual world. Uh, and by doing that, and by kind of scaling our, our outer system uh, through all, all these different games and, and developers that use our outer system, we actually unify the avatar standards across all these worlds. Um, and then, you know, it's easy for us to create this interoperable avatar experience where you create an avatar in one app and you can use it in other places as well. Or you buy an NFT for an avatar that then becomes usable across many different virtual worlds. Um, and yeah, like our goal is to be you know, the default avatar standard and, and uh, a network uh, for virtual worlds. Um, and that's what we do. And we raised like two, 20, 20, 22 million. Um, and we have like 40 people now and then scaling to like 70, 80. Um, and, and yeah, we're mostly based around Europe. I'm, I'm in New York myself. Um, and that's kind of like a, a quick overview of, of what we're up to. Yeah, that's awesome. No, and I guess uh, coming from our background, so so Elisha and I are with Fresh Consulting and we kind of service clients and we're helping them uh, from kind of a wide variety of, of services. So it could be from kind of strategy and innovation, going into building apps and uh, mm -hmm. uh, websites and enterprise things to, to even in going into robotics. And so uh, Elisha and I kind of also look at and kind of approach Ready Player Me from the developer standpoint. And there's been a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of looking at it from that side. Um, and we do have some questions for you around that around that topic as it relates to developers. Elisha, do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I love SDKs. Anything that mm -hmm. helps us time and anything that makes us look good to our clients, right? Like, hey, yeah. we did this thing overnight and suddenly mm -hmm. they get the feature. And, you know, not having to do the same work over and over, like authentication system and where do we host the site? I mm -hmm. love that you know, using the Ready Player Me SDK that we can actually deploy something quick. And Johnny, mm -hmm. I think we are even looking at integrating some of the avatars on the website of things. Mm -hmm. Like we have some websites where we can nice. integrate and display the avatars. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as it relates to that, yeah. So for those that have not worked with Ready Player Me yet and are thinking about leveraging the SDK, what kind of support exists or what kind of a... Yeah, are you guys partnering or are, are you directly involved with any of that process as uh, game development companies or metaverse companies or developers are thinking about working with you? Yeah, so I mean, we work with like 1,600 companies now or, or, or a little bit more. Um, so, so yeah, we offer SDKs for Unity, Unreal, you know, web, not an SDK, but it works easily on the web. Uh, native mobile, like you can use it in every platform, basically. Um, most of the developers are on Unity, um, so that's kind of like the focus for now, and to improve that uh, that part. Um, yeah, uh, and the, we support developers in integrating um, the avatars, but like we're quite quite overwhelmed um, at sometimes like signing one or two hundred companies per month. So like um, it takes time to like scale the team as well to, um, you know, like kind of. Um, be there for everyone uh but but that, that's kind of like where we are now do you have any community like a, a discord group a slack group where like maybe i can get self-help from like other members like other partner yeah sure i mean 
we have Discord. Uh, developer Discord has like nine thousand members. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, so people people there mostly developers. That's a good place to get a good quick reply. Actually, uh, our team is there actively uh, as well and like monitoring and and like custom support and stuff. So like, anyways, uh, that's a good good spot actually to get a good quick reply, or right. just to connect with other developers and share what you've created and, and so forth. Okay, that's that's very exciting. Building a great outer system actually takes years. You know, uh, we've built Ready Premi. Specifically, you know, we, we built it for two years, uh, but before that, we spent three, four years custom building out our systems for, you know, like Tencent, Huawei, HTC, Vodafone, Verizon, uh, and, and many other companies. Um, and during that process, we learned, you know, what it takes to build an outer system, what it takes to uh, build an outer system with different styles for different engines, like what the developers need in an outer system. And that's how we, you know, eventually managed to build Ready Per Me, which is, uh, you know, kind of a, a universal solution that works for all kinds of different worlds. And we're obviously like, you know, we're improving that. And, and it's like, you know, in a few years, I think it will be very hard for, for any, um, any kind of single developer or company to compete with the quality that you can get from Ready Per Me. Uh, unless you're like a super major developer and you're going to invest like a, a lot of uh, capital to, to like uh, build their own outer system. But, uh, but yeah, we want to give like a top, top quality outer system for anyone. Um, it's free to you to start using Greater Permi. We have a revenue share on the economy. So we believe outers are like a very important piece of, um, of the metaverse and that it should be available for everyone um, to use top quality outers. Um, and then, you know, uh, with the revenue share, we can, still make sure we, we're, you know, we can run a business as well. Yeah, I love that. I think that's one of the things that stood out to me. I think I looked at Ready Player Me I probably right at the very beginning. I remember being able to generate a, my own avatar and then I downloaded it and I was like, where do I actually see this? And I went to like another website, dropped the GLB yeah. file that it was and then was like, wow. And I think my LinkedIn profile like a year a year ago, a year and a half ago was with Ready Player Me. Yeah. Um, and that's interesting. I, I want to put something on the screen here as I, I kind of see your growth. You talked about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it's something you put on LinkedIn where I think you had uh, under 100 in January of last year. And you have this mm -hmm. huge ramp up, uh, you know, towards the end of, of uh, 2021, you're at 1400. You just mentioned 1600 between one and mm -hmm. 300 kind of new companies every single month. Um, so yeah. drastic, drastic growth. I guess my question for you is you talked about uh, for new players to come in and build their own avatar system, they're gonna, it's going to be hard to compete. Is that because of the network of all of the others that exist and having to compete with the interoperability of the avatars? Or is it getting into mm -hmm. more of like the quality and customization that you guys currently provide and will provide in the future? Or is it something completely different? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, yeah, with, with the growth, you know, the growth rate has actually been quite consistent it's like 30 40 percent month over month and we've just like kind of kept that rate and then eventually the numbers you know just like uh get big <laughs> but yeah we started the year with like less than 30, 30 companies that use our outers wow. and ended up with one 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 thousand so it was uh it was a wide year um why is it co difficult to compete like um w one side is like of course like cross game outers so like uh, if you want to build something like ready for me that makes it easy for people to like, kind of jump between worlds, then um, yeah, like it has a very strong network effect. So once you um, kind of scale the developer adoption and make your avatars you know, useful for people because they're us usable in all these different worlds, you start attracting like brands and NFT collections and things like that that kind of want to build for your avatars. And all these things like make your system better and more useful for, for people, um, which drives more people to the platform, more users, and that more users drive even more brands and more and more, uh, obviously, uh, worlds and, and games and so forth. So, yeah, that, that is a, that's why it's, it's a good, good business once you scale it, right? But, um, yeah. but the other side is like, just like, if you're building a game and you're figuring, like you're thinking about, am I going to invent an outer system uh, or am I going to use, you know, Ready for Me, for example, then to get the similar quality avatar into a game, um, like, yeah, I mean, a few years, it's going to be very hard, <laughs> right? So like, we're going to mm -hmm. continue improving and, and building and making, making it more flexible and so forth. 
Got it. Got it. Yeah, I was looking at some of uh, some of your roadmap. I think you guys announced kind of like an end of year 2021, what you had com- completed and then kind of looking and in, looking ahead into 2022 and, and something beyond that. You've already mentioned, hey, you want to become the default avatar system of the metaverse, kind of the ultimate goal. And you guys are helping mm-hmm. bridge that, right? One of the few companies that is drastically accelerating, right, this this uh, um kind of the the advent of having and again to your point it's not just a single metaverse but all the virtual worlds and metaverses that will exist and you guys are one of the the few making that bridge and thinking about the interoperability um and tackling mm-hmm. kind of a really huge thing with avatars um you mentioned the growth of your company i know there's uh, I have a few bullet points here of some things that are coming um what are you as i as i think about the funding you guys had at the end of last year um mm-hmm. and you mentioned some of the growth that's coming this year what are you most excited about? Uh, I know there's a lot of things on here, but I guess what are you most excited about on this list? Or maybe something that's not on this list um, as you think about Ready Player Me and, and what's ahead? Um, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, actually, we actually closed another round just just now. Uh, not announced yet. Oh, wow. We might not even announce it. <laughs> we were, but anyways, like, that's, that's cool. Um, so um, what I'm excited about... Um, you know, Ready Player Me first version um, was built to save developers time and help them kind of launch faster and um, and get a great outdoor system. Um, like the next stage of Ready Player Me is just building up monetization, so helping developers make money with avatars through NFTs, through skins, and and, and so forth. So that's that's kind of like the product focus will shift to that over the year. Um, while still like, you know, there's so much work to do with the tools and, and all that as well. Uh, so that will evolve and I'm excited about that. Um, obviously as a founder, you know, scaling the team is hard, but it's exciting as well. Like you kind of go to the next level a little bit, um, uh, and figuring out the problems there and like solving the problems that, that come with that. So that, that's cool. And that's exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of... It's a lot. Of <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. not a, maybe not a single thing. Is there is there a specific partnership? Because I know uh, there's a lot that have been announced uh, or at least that you even list on your website of, you know, partners that are coming or apps that are coming. Is there any any one or two in particular that you're excited about that might be doing something creative or, or custom? Um, that, uh, yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah, there's a few I can't yet speak about, but uh, there's something cool that comes out and will come out in April, for example um you know we're building some nft drops ourselves as well um yeah like there's a lot of apps going out every month um mm-hmm. i think we're excited about you know a lot of them or um and yeah there's nothing for like i i i can't i can't bring up at the moment <clears throat> yeah, yeah yeah of things that are coming that's okay what's, we'll keep an eye out uh, keep yeah, what's April. the best way to kind of keep in touch like yeah. as a user like is it right. blog the best way or twitter account twitter twitter is best i think yeah okay. like we we yeah we twitter we're pretty active there um blog is okay sometimes we write stuff there as well <laughs> but twitter is the best. <laughs> got it hmm. yeah 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 no that makes sense um yeah, it's good to kind of see, yeah, because there's a lot, a lot happening, lots of uh, acceleration, and we're seeing new things all the time. I think I saw Eighth Wall, thinking about mm-hmm. like the AR XR thing. That was a pretty big one. Um, as, as you know, a, big I just, I just saw a new, like just literally before I came here, I saw that Eighth Wall was acquired by Niantic. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh, the ones that made wow, Pokemon really? Go. Yeah. Wow. So. so the, so now it's Niantic that you're partnered with. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, congrats, uh, congrats to them. Yeah, congrats to Eighth yeah. Wall, and um, yeah, they're they're. they're awesome, yeah. I mean, Niantic's a pretty awesome company too. Thinking about some of the stuff they've done from an from an AR perspective, would love yeah. to have um would love to have my Ready Player Player Me uh, avatar playing Pokemon Go here in my neighborhood. I think that would be pretty cool. Yep. Uh, let's let's see if we can make that happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, you mentioned the NFTs. I think that's a pretty big uh, that's a pretty big one, right? Um, there's a lot of conversations, and it can, kind of sees seems as t- like kind of separate streams of conversation of NFTs and PFPs, and you know you're buying these avatars, but then you guys connected with uh, the crypto punks, and then you have the dead mouse drop that you have. I, I own one of the dead mouse ones and have that on my nice. avatar. Um, awesome. So it's been pretty cool to see that. But like avatars things that you've purchased from the blockchain that then connect to your avatar that you can bring across now a 1600 partner network it's pretty pretty big deal um Mm -hmm. um, pretty massive i guess how how important as we as you look into the roadmap how important is the blockchain and kind of web3 technologies 
for Ready mm -hmm. Player Me and you guys like embracing that fully across because uh, it's Ethereum based stuff right now, it seems, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, first, like personally, um, I started mining crypto in 2014. Uh, like, like, oh. mine with like, you know, GPU miners. So, like, I've been kind of around the space personally for a while, mm, uh, got it. but not like not like super deeply. But like you know, I've been like kind of um, you know, uh, yeah, I've been in in, in the space for for some time. Um, so I'm, I'm personally very excited. I have hundreds of NFTs myself. So, um, so that's that. As a company, um, you know, in general, like when you look at the NFT market today, like most of the stuff that is sold are like it's, it's art collectibles or nfts for a particular game so you can buy an nft for decentraland for example but it's not like interoperable across many different games usually uh because it's like super hard to to make that happen like just the you know taking a 3d model an avatar asset from one game to another making it work it's like it's super hard so um we can do that because our avatar system is used by all these different games so it's actually easy for us to you know attach an nft a dead mouse head on an avatar and make it usable in all these different games. So mm -hmm. um, that's why it's also like super, uh, it's a good match for, for Web3 and NFTs um, because we can give NFT creators a way to make their, their creations usable in games uh, through integrating with, with our avatars. Um, and we take a revenue share for that and we share that with games and apps. So the games actually get paid for letting those NFTs uh, you know, mm. to come into their, into their worlds. It helps us support our developers. It helps us, you know, uh, introduce new developers to the Web3 ecosystem. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way for, to, for us to monitor as well. So um, that's how we think about it. You know, we have some jobs we're building ourselves, but mostly long term, like we're not the main kind of NFT or content creator on the platform. We are just the, the infrastructure that enables all that. So if you're, uh, you know, doing a, a digital sneaker, sneaker drop, uh, you can integrate with Reddit for me. And we make sure that those sneakers get used in, in worlds. Um, and we, mm. we take a revenue share and we share it with, with games. So, um, so that's kind of how we fit into the, into the world. Yeah. At, at the same time, you know, we don't label ourselves as a crypto company or as a uh, NFT platform or anything like that. We are an avatar company. We're for everyone. So if you don't want to use NFTs, you don't have to. Like it's an optional part of the platform. If you're a developer or if you're an end user as well so we're experimenting and it feels like this is a great you know um this will be a massive massive kind of a it's just like like it's just like ownership of assets feel like feels like a very necessary part of building you oh, know, yeah. the metaverse so yep. nfts feel we like <laughs> it could be a solution right yeah we think we think it's a huge deal i mean i think so, you know, I, I also do a lot of kind of investment, definitely not 2014 based, more recent for me. But I think about I'm constantly thinking about when I purchase an NFT, OK, what kind of utility comes with this? And as it relates to yeah. PFPs, a lot of them claim, right, metaverse ready, metaverse ready. And what they mean by that is you can download an FBX file, you can download a GLB file. Yeah. Not quite what you guys are doing, right? You guys are going <laughs> from the avatar system. You're connecting to MetaMask, which is then pulling mm -hmm. in your NFTs. Um, and then right now, right, if you have a dead mouse or crypto punk, then theoretically you could put that right on there, put your head, your dead mouse head, and then that comes with you, right? So it's very, it's a, it's a very, it's a distinction that's super important to, I think, point out. Um, lots yep. of people claiming metaverse interoperability uh, or compatibility, um, but you guys are one of the few actually kind of doing that. Will we be seeing yep. other blockchains outside of uh, uh, Ethereum, or is that something yet yep. to be determined? Yeah, for sure. Like we, in general, like we're very open with like uh, things like that. So like uh, we will definitely integrate other wallets. Like we, we the Ted Mouse drop is actually on on, on Polygon, uh, but you know it's with MetaMask. But um, anyways, like yeah, we'll we'll have, support our, our change, uh, chains and, and marketplaces and and so forth. So uh, trying to connect with you know whatever makes sense. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Um... What, what do you think is one of the biggest hurdles that exist as it relates, right? You guys are tackling avatar interoperability on games and avatars, uh, sorry, and mm -hmm. metaverses. What do you think is one of the biggest hurdles that still exists for avatar interoperability? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, yeah. So like one thing is, is like a long term, it needs to make 
sense for everyone and their businesses to support interoperable avatars or interoperability in general. Like it needs to be a better business um, than building a closed world. Uh, like that's what we're trying to do with Ready Play Me by kind of sharing revenue from asset sales sold to so get paid for skins or NFTs to come into your world uh, to, you know, uh, yeah. And I can also like help you sell stuff in your game that works in other worlds. So I think one thing is just like, proving very clearly that this is a better business uh, than building a closed world. Uh, because also you get more users to come in with their existing avatars, you know, whatever the reasons are, it needs to be a better business. Um, and, you know, related to that, it's just the philosophy of, of building closed worlds and games and virtual worlds compared to open. Because like intuitively for the, most of the existing kind of gaming or virtual world industry, like it feels like it's better to build a closed world and like own your economy, control your economy, um, you know, sell your own skins, limit what's, you know, like let nothing in, <laughs> let nothing out. Um, and that's like the default um, mindset. I think um, why also NFTs and Web3 are extremely important is not only the technology, but it's the, it's the philosophy of uh, building more open and more connected worlds and platforms. Um, and that is starting to get into the gaming industry. People are more flexible. They're more interested in trying out these things. Like we've been making avatars for eight years. It's always been our goal to like eventually build like a, a database of avatars that you can fetch from like, different games. People like never like it's a, it's a recent thing that people are open to that idea, and like mostly comes from the NFT Web three world. So yeah, to summarize, it's like the business needs to be good for everyone, and uh, and the philosophy needs to change. And the first one, you know, helps <laughs> helps helps the second one. Um, and obviously, like there's a lot of technical difficulties, and like you know, our, our router system needs to evolve to be like you know triple triple A quality, and like there's a lot of things to do there. Um, and then interoperability, interoperability is like hard for, for, yeah, like the visual styles, different specs, you know, animation rigs. There's a lot of like tech that needs to go into that as well. But I think, you know, tech solutions are tech problems are always, um, you know, solvable given enough time and capital. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's harder to change the, the, the philosophy of an industry. <laughs> so that's why that's that, a very that good is point. Yeah, yeah uh, that must be the most difficult part of your yeah. job as a CEO, right? Like communicating yeah. the vision to your partners and other organizations. Right. Yeah. And like, ultimately, like, we are not going to able, like, we're not able to change the industry on our own, right? So like, we, we are just, um, ultimately, we see, we see that it's, it's, it is changing and it's like changing for a lot of different reasons. And like the Web3 kind of mindset is, I think, number one reason um and um and like you know we are trying to help as much as we can and like you know on our end i think we're like you know closer to proving that interoperability is good business than most other companies at least um so so like we can do that on our end and ensure that you know if you have an interoperable avatar even between web two games, uh, then it is good business. Like people buy, buy more skins. If you sell skins that work in a hundred games versus one um, and then, you know, and so forth. So like, those are the things that we are doing and, and, and we're trying to prove on our own and then like, you know, show the, the rest of the industry that this is good business. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Are you guys doing anything? I know there's been a lot of talk recently. Uh, I think we've been hearing a lot about as it relates to the avatar, taking your avatar with you and representing yourself digitally as kind of a virtual uh, character, your vir virtual version of yourself. Um, there's the this question around like identity validation, right? Being a you know 40 year old man acting as a 13 year old girl and kind of being mm -hmm. going to different worlds and being different. Do you guys think that uh, do, will Ready Player Me ever take on some of that kind of identity validation or verification? Yeah, I mean, we're certainly open for that. Um, you know, if it becomes a problem, um, mostly we just kind of see what developers need and ask and and like deliver that <laughs> so like for mm -hmm. now it's not a problem for for most people but i, I can yeah. see how it will be you know um and it's not clear what the solution is right um and i think there are going to be there are going to be a lot of platforms where like it's not a like problem you know you, you, people go there to like play a different character and essentially right 
that's mm-hmm. totally fine. Um, yep. So versus there will be other platforms that are very strict about you know you being yourself, yeah. and there it's, just, it's more needed to to have some system like that. But so far, it hasn't been a problem. That's a very good point. Yeah, some worlds are, you know, I think recently Elisha and I did a review on the sandbox and how it came out on mm-hmm. Mac and we kind of started consuming some of the sandbox as, as kind of a metaverse environment and notice that it's very, very game focused. There's It's not really communication focused, whereas if you go to something like Somnium Space, right, uh, like you guys are, are compatible mm-hmm. with, right, um, communication is kind of a big deal, right? It's like you're, you're moving around, you're interacting with people and it becomes like... Mm-hmm person to person right um and so there's that big spectrum of like are you are you gaming like what's kind of the purpose of the app or the of the metaverse um what's the kind of core focus to kind of go into the other end of the spectrum of kind of communication being kind of key to that so i can see that that playing a different place as it relates to the kind of identity and definitely not Mm -hmm. something that's like uh you know an issue across a lot of these yet but you know as we we see new verses come out i think we'll see more and more of that so we'll kind of keep an eye on that um yeah if you think about a uh, Ready Player Me in the next year or five years, uh, you know, like in the next year, lots of stuff has happened. Twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, lots of plans. Um, what will what will Ready Player Me look like in one or in five years? Yeah, I mean, in, in one year, um, you know, a lot more partners, games that use our our, our tools. Um, I hope we'll be you know able to prove some 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 kind of the cross game um, economy. Uh, parts as well that attracts even more people to like open up and have interoperable avatars um in five years you know generally like long term we don't see ourselves uh, as an avatar company more like an avatar rails you know so you can have have other avatars already pay me you can help game developers get the avatars that are using their game to come out of the mm-hmm. game and go to other games you know, work with other 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 creators and providers to include their avatars in Ready Player Me. There are some things we're doing already with uh, with, with that. So uh, I think long term, like it makes sense for people to have different avatars they can use. Um, so we don't really believe in a world where you just have like one style of avatar that everybody uses in every app. I think that would be a boring world. So we're definitely going to support different styles and, and different types of avatars and and help other other avatars kind of navigate between the metaverse as well. Um, yeah, but generally, like, yeah, we want to be the default place where people store their avatars and, 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 you know, um, use them or like to us anyways. <laughs> yeah, that'll be exciting to keep track of, I think in the next year and then in the coming years it does make a lot of sense. I know we, Elisha and I talked about recently, like this concept of, do you want to be your digital twin self, right? And, and with different stylistic versions, or do you want to kind of be more abstract and be a dragon or be an animal or be a, you know, and it's like, depending on what the use case is, depending on the app, you kind of want to represent yourself differently. And you guys are That's right. doing that across the different apps today, what you're wearing mm-hmm. or what you might look like might be different. So it'll be cool to see that kind of come from other games as well. Yeah. Well, awesome. Just for last question here with you. Thanks for the mm-hmm. time today. What are, what are you most excited about as it relates to to the metaverse or the the versus the the multiverse mm-hmm. metaverse, whatever you want to call it? <laughs> I'm looking for the first like metaverse web three game and platform that is like somewhat mainstream and is a good game first that scales, you know, to to like tens of millions or hundreds of millions of users. Uh, I think that said that would be exciting to see, and obviously it will take some time. Um, and and just think it would be interesting to like, you know, to see a clear proof that building an open economy in a game is better uh, and it's sustainable, and all these things. I think that's, that's that's going to be interesting, and it's going to be important if we want to see, you know, the open open metaverse. Uh, there needs to be clear proof that this is the better way to to build build things. So. Um, those things. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that answer. Well, Hey, thanks for the time today. I know that you'll be at South by Southwest. We'll actually be there ourselves. I'm, I'm in Austin actually. I will be here down. So we'll see if we can catch you there. Um, you know, you'll yeah. be part of the founders and gaming panel. Uh, for actually, South by Southwest. Yeah. I'm actually part of another panel as well. Uh, on the metaverse. Oh. It's uh, oh, great. Yeah, we'll it out. It's, yeah. That's uh, that's huge. Yeah. Cool. So thank you for that. Maybe say see you at South by, and then thanks for having me today. It was it was fun, fun chatting with you. Yes, awesome. Yeah, thank thanks you for so joining much. us. All right. Have a good rest awesome. of your day. Thank, thank you. you.